Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Uh, if you're new here, my name is David Hyman. I'm your tour guide in Israel. Uh, today we're visiting Jaffa Gate in the old city of Jerusalem. Uh, I'm going to tell you five short stories about Jaffa Gate. And uh, if you want to hear them all, stay with me till the end. So there's, there are eight gates uh, to get in and out of the old city of Jerusalem. Uh, seven of them are available and open. Uh, one gate is locked, the Gates of Mercy. Uh, each gate has more than one name, just to make it confusing and uh, more fun for us guides. Uh, Jaffa Gate is named Jaffa Gate in Hebrew and in English because for hundreds of years, maybe thousands of years, this was the gate that you left to start your journey in that direction which eventually took you all the way down to the port city of Jaffa. So this would be the road to Jaffa. But then there's another road that goes the other way. And that road goes to a city called Hebron. In Arabic, the name of Hebron is Halil. Halil means the friend. The friend of Allah. Who is the friend of Allah? Abraham. Ibrahim. So Bab al-Halil in Arabic. So for 19 years, from 1948 until 1967, this road, this was where the border was between two countries. So the east side, where the old city is, and East Jerusalem, this was the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan. And the west side was West Jerusalem. And there was a barrier between the two countries and you could not cross back and forth between East and West Jerusalem for 19 years until 1967. During those years, uh, there were peaceful times, but there were also times with unrest. And when there were times with unrest, the snipers on both sides would fire at each other. And those fire marks can still be seen in the walls of the old city till, till this day. You can see this wall here right near the gate. It is full of these small potholes. So the walls, and the gates that we have today, they're from the 16th century. They were built by uh, the Ottoman Emperor, the Ottoman Sultan, Suleiman the Magnificent. And uh, Suleiman sent his uh, troops here, his uh, engineers, to restore and build the walls of the old city. We actually know that for a fact because there's inscriptions. See, there's an inscription there. And there's one right above the gate. And even within the gate. I'll tell you about this inscription soon. And because the inscriptions are in Arabic, we can actually read the translation here. Suleiman, son of Salim Khan, may Allah perpetuate his kingdom, commanded that these blessed walls be constructed in the year 1945 in the Muslim Hejra calendar, that is 1538 in the Gregorian calendar. Yeah, so on the left side, after you enter the Jaffa Gate, you can't avoid uh, these two tombs. The, everyone stops and takes a look. We can see that they uh, have uh, the turban on one of them. The other was the turban and is missing, but there's no names. So what are these two nameless tombs doing within the walls of the old city? Uh, so we, we don't know, so we make up legends and stories. Uh, the most popular story is that these two tombs belong to the engineers of the uh, Ottoman uh, Empire. Uh, and um, these were the engineers that were hired to fix and uh, maintain the walls of the old city of Jerusalem by Suleiman the Magnificent. When the project was over, uh, now we don't know exactly what happened. One story is that they asked for more money. The other story is that they um, left parts of the old city out of the walls. And the third story is that the Sultan was just afraid that they're going to give away all the secrets of the walls and where the weak spots are. And uh, eventually their faith was being beheaded and buried here at the entrance of Jaffa Gate. probably noticed that the gate over there uh, is not really uh, in much use. It's more like decorative because a big part of the wall of the old city 
is uh, missing, it's removed. Uh, the story here is that uh, until the 1890s, there was a very, very deep moat that was surrounded the citadel of Jerusalem. Actually, you can see the moat extended all the way to this marker on the road. You can see there's a marker on the road and there it turns. So there was a really, really deep moat. And let me get out of the way of this car. And there was a kind of a small part of the wall just connecting these two enormous buildings, the Citadel of Jerusalem and the Jaffa Gate. And in the 1890s, an imperial visit was planned. Uh, the uh, Wilhelm II, the uh, Kaiser of uh, Germany came to visit Jerusalem to inaugurate a few of the buildings that he sponsored and to honor him the uh, Ottoman governors of Jerusalem decided to fill the moat with land, raise the level up to where it is now, uh, remove the small wall that was here and build this ramp so that the entourage, the convoy of Kaiser Wilhelm could enter the old city of Jerusalem. This very narrow alley on the left side after Jaffa Gate, you walk inside and all the way up at the front you can find a half a pillar with an inscription in Latin and uh, we can read it's uh, mm, Antonio Maximo and here it says Legio Ten Fratensis so this was a uh, kind of a dedication pillar it was made by one of the Roman officers for his commander uh, kind of to honor him so this was found somewhere around here in Jaffa Gate and was removed and uh, placed here in what we call secondary use. So I hope you enjoyed this tour of Jaffa Gate in the old city of Jerusalem. If you did, big thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel and write a comment. Tell me where you want to go. I'll take you there, no problem. So until our next tour, until our next video, bye bye, shalom shalom, toda rabah. Take care everyone, see you on our next video.